my name is Lynn Howe. I'm the secretary of the Northern Illinois Draft Horse and Mule Association. We were here in 1999 en masse because they decided that since horses had ushered in the millennium, it was only fitting and proper that horses usher out the millennium. And now it's 10 years later and they've decided that the tractor breed this year was the original horsepower. So we have as many draft horses and mules as we could muster. And there are, I think at last count, we're getting close to 60 head in the barn. And we're just having a really good time. As Leo drives up there, it gives me great pleasure this afternoon to honor our friend and co-founder of the Stevenson County Antique Club and this steam thrashing show. Back in the early 1970s, a small group of people led and encouraged by this man had a dream to establish a thrashing show so people could see the way agriculture used to be. The dream was met with the birth of the Antique Engine Club and the display and operation of the steam engines and gas tractors this dream was a good dream, however, he and others knew the dream could be better, so he started to collect horsepower equipment and rebuild it for display at the show. Once it was rebuilt, however, it seemed sort of silly not to dem demonstrate it, so horses and their teamsters were invited to participate. We are gathered this week to celebrate the 40th anniversary of this vision of a man and his friends in appreciation for a lifetime of service to the Draft Horse community, the Northern Illinois Draft Horse and Mule Association presents this prize to Robert Lamb for his enthusiastic and generous support. Would you all please stand and join us in a round of applause for this generosity, foresight, and heart of gold of this 99-year-old young gentleman Thank you, Robert Lamb. They're gonna come right across in front of you one more time. Wait. Thanks, Bob, for all your help. 99 years old. I'm sorry. And just, they say the corn picker is for sale. If anybody would like to buy that, $25,000 will take care of it today. And a Stoughton double box with the original decal on the side. That's owned by Ron Enley of Arena, Wisconsin. That's an example of horsepower, ladies and gentlemen. Here comes another team. Band Champions driving it. He's got a John Deere uh, wagon there with his nice spring seat on. They'll give you a ride to the ground. If they're out driving around, just say, hey, stop, Dan, I'm gonna ride. He'll let you jump in the back of the wagon, or he can clean up after the horse, whatever you'd like. That's all free. Here comes the international uh, seven-foot bar mower. Then the Belgium team is driven by Denver Trom, and owned by Liza Howe. That's the way we used to cut hay. Took forever, and now they got 30 foot hay vines. Homemade uh, ground drive power cart. Ah, uh, let's see here. Rear Habs, an ACD 17, built in 1983, and it's owned by Terry Byer family. Take a look at this. And four mules on this one. Wasn't all horsepower. Mules had a lot of work. Here comes a John Deere plow, two bottom. And uh, 1904, the plow was, was built, and it's driven by Kit and Kitty, Dewey and Jakes. And Clint and Pam Zell are the owners. And that plow is used. You can see it on the mole boards and the colders. Here comes a little drag spring tooth arrow, six footer. 
Charlie Kine from Monroe, Wisconsin. Today they call this a soil finisher. Older version of soil finisher. Got wheels on. All right, you know, these guys got these 48 foot discs and stuff that go out in the field. Here comes a five foot International Harvester disc with transport trucks, built about 1920, 1930 era, owned by Dwayne Mock. You got another John Deere wagon, single box, spring seat, and that's owned by Rich Mary from Wallen, Illinois. Another dark team on this one. This is the way they spread the residue. A new idea, 75 bushel ground drive in her spreader. Wide track, and that is driven by Charlie Clint. Here comes the John Deere number four, big number four more with a six bar more, our black bar, two self folks, and driven by Kenny Rankin, owned by Maury Howe. Here comes the doctor's buggy. This is the way the doctor drove around years ago. We didn't have the EMS, didn't have the ambulance service, no flashing lights. It's a, called a C.P. Kimball, one-man wagon, the doctor buggy. In 1913, is built home by Ed Martin. Here comes something very neat. Let's get him down here in front. Hitch wagon with six Belgians, mule hitch. And this is the outfit that's going to perform immediately following the program here today, the parade. They'll be out here demonstrating how they do things. Owned and operated by Bob Champion. So he'll be back a little bit later on. All right, here comes the Fluter Buggy. Fluter Buggy was manufactured in Charles City, Iowa, around the turn of the century. Single-seated buggy has spindle seat on. It's called a stick seat. Owned by Bob Block from Pearl City. Look how that steers, yes. Back axle steers. My God. Bob, you find the very unique things. Uh, you're only, what, 90 years old, Bob? You're still out here doing this? There's only three known to exist. Are those buggies and Bob Lock and has got one. All right. Here comes a unicorn hitch. Three, a single and two doubles, three dapple gray versions. Wendell Dupree's is on. Only a nice wagon. And again, these will all be on operation today and tomorrow out here. 40th anniversary of Stevenson County Show. Horsepower. Here comes Visa Viss. Four passenger wagon with a cover on the top. Leo, uh, Leo Woolover is the owner operator of this one. Very nice. Here comes a Studebaker wagon. How many of you know where Studebakers are made at, these wagons? What state? Indiana? South Bend, Indiana. That's where they come out of. Persian Morgan Cross, Bill Brass. Good old Bill, he's living in German Valley, up by uh, Stockton now, driving this here. Nice Studebaker wagon. All right, here's the final one in the horse drive. Billy Mitchell's at the control. Billy's been around here for the, since the turn of the century also. How you doing, Billy? Nice wagon, nice wagon, Democratic wagon. He'll give rides on this after a while. If you're out in the mountain, don't be afraid to stop to him. Hey, let's give all the horse people a big round of applause. Okay, my name is Robert Champion. I'm from Roscoe, Illinois. Uh, we produce, all summer long, we do different types of shows. We do farming shows, plowing, thrashing demonstrations. I do uh, quite a few parades with an eight mule hitch. This is Posey, she's 13. Uh, my mules run from the age of 19 down to seven. Uh, I've got nine of them here, and we show a six or an eight horse hitch with them. Um, and do a lot of farming work, plowing work. They're pretty versatile and they'll do just about anything that you want them to do. Bob, which pulled more, mules or horses? Pound for pound mules. Now, if we were in Chicago on the streets, I'll show you how we would dock this thing. 
Come around. Come around. Come around. Come around. Easy. Come around. Come around. Prince, King. Ho! Oh. We're at the dock. There you go. Come back. Gonna back up, watch. Lead horses to the computers this outfit. Oh. Gonna get a straight Oh. Out. All on command. Back around, girls. Back. 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 Oh. There we go. All right, come back. Come. Good job. Easy. Come around, Prince. Come around, King. One more time. Come. Get over here. Come around, guys. Casey. Come on, Polly. No. Gotta walk. Come, guys. Come, D. Come around. Easy. Oh. All right, come. Come around. All right, come around. Polly, get over. And you don't really want to rub your log against them trees because then you ruin the bark on them and you ruin that tree as it's growing. So that's kind of what this is representing. For the people that haven't been around something like this, I would say that log probably weighs just about a half a ton. That probably weighs about a thousand pounds. And it's not really too heavy for the horses. Uh, average pair of horses, we'll say these horses that are out here weigh 1,500 pounds a piece. They should be able to pull their own weight, which would be but they can't do that all day. Uh, they're going to work them all day, only about 10% of their weight of what they're doing. So they got to drag about 300 pounds for the whole day. That's what they can pretty much carry all day. And that'd be like using a mower. Uh, probably a one bottom plow would be a little bit more than that, uh, but they could do it.
Oh. Team. Team. Oh. Team. Team. Am I going up the wrong side? I saw that. No, you didn't. Yeah. Well, I went out of the truck and just did. It didn't tip over, so it doesn't make any difference. No, you didn't. Den Denver just Denver distracted that horse. He's stamping on that bridge and it distracted my horse. That guy, that Denver. Whoa, 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 back. I'm Robert Lyon. I put this thrashing outfit together back in 1994, 74 I mean, by going up to Joe Cohn's sale. And I bought the equalizers and poles and stuff for the tread, the uh, power. And then a guy come to me and wanted to sell me a, a horsepower. He said it was down in the other field. So I went down there and I bought it from him. It didn't go through the sale. It was pretty rotten. We got it home. We had to put all new wood in it. We got that done. Then we needed a thrasher. I put an ad in the engineer's magazine telling him I wanted it for horsepower or could, couldn't be converted to horsepower. I had 17 thrashers offered to me and only two would fit the job. And this one I got up in Wisconsin. Brought it home and Spent six weeks, day and night almost, my grandson and I, to restoring it. And then we had Rich Johnson come down to stripe it. All thrashers, that, well, most machinery at that time was had pinstriping on it. And this does not have all the pinstriping that it had originally, but most of it is done. So we've been using it all but one year ever since 1974. That was bought new by three brothers up in Muglaris, uh, the uh, Hosley brothers, and it was used 56 years by them, first with a horsepower, then they had a, I believe a 14 horse Dover engine running it because horses don't run it too well. It, they go fast at the beginning and then they slow down so much where a gas engine run it steadily. And they used it 56 years and then it went up to uh, 
Rock River Thrashers a few years, and then it's setting the shed up there for a while till I bought it. Okay, what they're gonna do here right now is they're gonna get the motion in, uh, going, and that fella down on the knee is not praying right at the moment. He's turning that little crank and tightening that belt. <laughs> okay, and as you notice, that uh, shaft is now turning and turning the thrashing machine. And the idea is to get those horses up to power, get them going around there, a uh, pretty good clip. I'll go under some stumble block off of that horsepower, which is run with a series of bevel gears and flat gears. And then it will drive up through the belt powered clutch here and into the thrasher onto a ring and pinion, which will increase that thrasher machine uh, to 1,050 RPM. So the horses there are going at two and a half times a minute. The thrash machine is running at 1,050 times a minute. So that'll give you a little idea of what the reduction is. The way things are today, the fella in the middle uh, years back would do all the directing and would do all the operating of the horses. The uh, horses operated through his command and uh, he stood there all day when he wanted them to stop. There's a little lever down by his foot down there and that would be called the brake and he stopped the horses when uh, they needed to be stopped for whatever oiling, greasing, uh, dinner call or whatever it was. Generally speaking, there was two wagons, one wagon on each side, and they pitched bundles and it was hand fed. And today we have with us the original owner, Bob Lamb, who is 99 years old, and we're happy that he's up there or going to her. I only hope I can do something similar to that when I'm 99 years old. This machine here is uh, called an agitator, a case agitator. It's one of the first machines made. It's 117 years old. This machine has been operating and thrashing for 98 years. 98 years, 117 years old. It's been operating and thrashing for 98 years. You notice in the back, it's got what we call a slat stacker. And that slat stacker was a, a needed thing because if you dumped the straw right out behind the pressure machine, it soon would plug because it needed that area in back there for the air to get back out and for it to separate the grain. The slat stacker helped to put it out on a pile so it then could be moved to another pile and that would be made into like a, a cone type shape uh, so that it could be used during the winter for bedding and the dairy cat for your dairy cattle and cattle in the barns and this type of thing. We invite you later to come up and talk to the fellows that are involved in operating it, take a look at the machine, talk to the horsemen, they're all interested in the horses and that type of thing. And uh, here later on this evening, why we invite you all down, we're going to have a horse pull. We'll have these horses on a pulling sled, and uh, we'll put on a show down there in front of the grandstand.
2041 Rex weighed 2041 pounds. Okay, these horses here tonight will weigh uh, up uh, 3,200 pounds and over will be considered the heavyweight class and 3,200 pound, 3, pounds and under will can be considered the lightweight class. Uh, they will be hooked on the sled and they have three opportunities to pull the load and if they don't pull the load on three opportunities then they will be eliminated and placed accordingly. Uh, the next teams that have pulled the 27 feet, the weight will be added, more weight will be added, and they will continue on until every last team is eliminated. First time out, they're going to be pulling the empty sled, which is 1,500 pounds.
Then we'll see who's left. Easy, big guys. Cody, that a boy. Easy try. Come over. Come over. Cody, ho, try. Ho. Ho. Oh, we're gonna go around. There we go. Back. Back. Wait, I get him straight. Back. Okay. Ho. Ho. All right, boy, well up. Get over there. Sorry, Cody. Oh. Oh. Okay, set it down. All right, big boys. Easy. Okay, Richard 
500 pounds? 1,000 pounds. Total weight of the sled will be 4,500 pounds. All right, big guys. Come around. Try, easy. Cody, ho, ho, ho. And back, Cody, try. Back, back. All right, get up there. Get up. Get up there, try. Ho, 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 easy. Easy. Try. Ho. 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 All right. Get up. Try. Go. Get up. Get up there. Get up there, Cody. Get up. Try. Ho. Ho. Let them stand a minute. No, I'm going to stop with them. They're my bobsled horses. They don't need to do any more. All right, guys. Easy. Hey. Easy. Okay. I guess they want a thousand pounds, so we'll put a thousand pounds on. That will be fifty-five hundred pounds for the end weight. We have two teams in the pull-off: Steve Elliott and Dan Champion. Okay, Matt. Oh, easy. Oh, 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 oh. Get up there. Get up. Get up there. Got your third pole, you wanna do it? Yep, right on the other side. Going the other way. Okay, he's gonna hit the other way. Huh? Yep. Yep. I'll be on the sled. Ho! 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 Good for a second. Okay, let's give him a round of applause. Okay, we have our results of tonight's heavyweight horse poll. First place goes to Steve Elliott. Second place, Dan Champion. Third place, Bob Champion. Fourth place, Richard Dickers. Fifth place, Liza Howe. Sixth place, Steve Elliott. 7th place, Sydney DeFries, and 8th place, Denver Tron. 
Congratulations, Congratulations Steve. Nice Thanks, pull Bob. with them guys. They look good. It was tough. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Oof. Okay, we want to thank everybody, all of our teamsters particularly, for bringing their horses up, putting on such a great good job. I good hope job. everybody in the crowd had a wonderful time. And same time next year. Same time next year.